Uh, high country is renowned for you know difficult travel, good four wheel driving, you know really nice off grid camping. We look at the trips now. We've done the high Ks. You know we've got a lot of development out of the corrugations, the high speed stuff. Now we're really looking at you know, impact resistance. Really bring it down here and test them. You know push them to their limits. Find our limits. Find their limit. You know see if we can break stuff. You know if we can break it. We know that other people can break it and we'll engineer it out. So I had the privilege of taking one of the expedition series down to the Great Australian Bight, actually two of them. Uh, I discovered how awesome that they were there. Um, I thought I was going to be able to break them on that trip, but no go. My country is just completely different terrain, much more technical, um, not like the you know endurance test of the outback. I think the Victorian high country is one of those places that you know all of our customers talk about regularly. My family's done a lot of touring. Obviously Nick, our partner at ARB, this is his, his backyard and he's been pushing us to get back down here. Well, I've done the majority of the tracks. So the thing you've got to know is, is the weather is just so wild here. Um, it goes from being super hot to cold and raining and blowing a gale and snow. So all that, that the track conditions, they, they change monthly here. that they've been there before but it's their approach to going somewhere and I think that's what we take away from you know, travelling with people like Rob from HEMA and, and Nick from ARB that these guys have done a lot of travelling and they know how to prepare to travel. I mean with five days you're going to have to just focus on the really good stuff. So are you still that's thinking that trip we're talking about there is tight in five days? Yeah, a lot of these tracks they're, they're tight with two four wheel drives. Um, you got a two and a half metre van now, it's a lot bigger than a 200 series. Is that going to be possible with the 18 or not? I don't think, but like there's a crazy yeah. Zeka Spur, it'd be funny just to watch Dave do 17 turns <laughs> to try and get up Zeka Spur track, it's got heaps of switchbacks. We're going to be weather dependent, That's, that'd be my thing to you guys. Oh, well, the rain will make the, it'll push the grade up real fast. There's, I'll be skiing downhill. Yeah, there's going to be, you. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, it's very scary. <laughs> Yeah, I'm more worried about uphill. You don't make it and then you've got to come down backwards. That's when you've got to put on. Um, so you tow vehicles are the 79 and the Amarok? Yeah. Amarok towing the expedition series. Expedition. Yeah. It's got heaps of horsepower, mate. What are you worried about? It doesn't have low range. Do people ever, like, tear the cars together going down there? Like, are we going to be hooking the, the Ranger up to the back of the 18 to help it down the hill or anything like that? Or? Yeah, yeah. There's well, a, yeah I've done that with camper trailers before. Whereas you got a car behind it trying to pull the camper and keep it straight. Yeah. As long as as long as the camper's not heavier than the car, you're fine. Like doing it to the 18 footer, it's really going to drag the Ranger into the side of the hill. Mm. <laughs> it's insured, eh? <laughs> Sounds like the more I'm hearing, the more I'm endorsing Reckies. That's good, right? It's scary. <laughs> it's the worst that could happen. It sounds like we got the basis and then we'll just sort of stage out the, the, the spots from there, mm -hmm. work on sort of trip distances and stuff like that and, mm -hmm. and come up with a, a plan that'll change as soon as we get on the road. Yeah. Yeah. Oh mate, this is the start of what's going to be an epic adventure. It's about four o'clock in the morning at Link Crescent. We just hooked the brand new trailers up. They literally rolled out last night. We got about a 15 hour drive today to head down to Vic High Country. We don't really know what's going to happen down there. There's some fires, snow starting to fall. It's going to be an amazing trip. Really looking forward to it. Everyone's hooked up and we're going to head the road so we can get south. Yeah, it was a massive effort. I think we were supposed to leave at four, but usual, we forgot a few things. <laughs> Um, so I think we left at about quarter to five, but we made up made up some good time. Well, I mean, yeah, day one, that's, you know, highway touring, um, you know, sending south basically. So pretty uneventful, but, you know, highway touring, you've got to do it to get places, and, you know, we did it in a day. Uh, it was a massive day. We ended out uh, just out of Cooma, so it was a brilliant effort, I thought, from all of us. So it hit Sydney peak hour traffic, <laughs> which would have been a nightmare towing, so I was wrapped that I didn't have to tow this time. So, uh, but yeah, we found a, a cool little spot there out in Cooma and mapped it out. And, our final shop and headed into uh, Kosciuszko National Park. This is bucket list for sure. We've heard this place is tough, Vic high country. You need a really good four wheel drive, we've got those. Four wheel drive trailers, absolutely we've got those. 
I'm towing the all new Expedition Series production model. I've got the trusty 79 with the uh, latest prototype uh, canopy and the 18 foot 6 which is our favourite big van to take away. We've got the bunk variation with uh, three bunks in the back so we can uh, sleep all the crew. Absolutely, you've got to be well planned, you've got to have good gear, we've got that stuff, we've got good people. Nick from ARB, Maroon Chittor is back, we've got Rob from HEMA, Matt from Your Mates Brewery, so we've definitely got Frosties to keep us sorted. Really looking forward to getting into this. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go get myself a first trout out of the high country. <laughs> Leading us to here, Tricky Nicky. Yeah, buddy, I think we're, uh, we'll, we'll head towards uh, Jindabyne and um, head through to uh, Threadbow and uh, Kosciuszko National Park and have a chat to Rob and see where we go from there. This is your old stomping ground, Nick. You reckon uh, trailers are going to be around right here? Oh, mate, um, I'm not too sure about that actually, so it really depends on, um, on how much rain they've had. A little bit of remote camping and um, Maybe watching Dave fall around in the river to try and catch a trout would be good. Yeah, don't you worry about me, boys. I've had plenty of tips come in and um, things are really looking up to uh, catch a fish this trip. It does raise the question as to what we're actually doing down here. I guess the last uh, few trips we've been, you know, all the corrugations and the, you know, the dirt and the, you know, all the stuff that really punishes off our caravans for, for our testing. You know, now we're looking at, you know, these expedition exploration style vehicles and you know I guess that's sort of what leads to this stuff it's a bit sort of harder as far as the full off-roading goes but also being you know that self-sustained so I guess that's what your rig you know apart from the big van behind you set up for in it you know we, we've been hanging around in the middle and the west and around the top and we haven't come down too far to this more alpine type country and, and obviously this alti alpine country does bring high mountains and tight little windy roads going up and down them so it's going to be uh, good fun, interesting, hopefully we learn a lot and uh, most of all have plenty of fun. My oh, mate, like that 18 foot 6 is perfect, it's just a base camp somewhere, uh, have a cracking fire by a creek laughing baby trying to catch a fish and then um, go for a bit of a wheel and sightseeing and a bit of a hike. Uh, I think we better keep it quiet. I think the uh, the brides will be watching this thinking we're on holiday. We're, we're out here working, it's serious stuff. Yeah, basically climbing up through Jindabyne and into Threadbow was probably an eye-opener as what we were actually heading into and the um, the scope of the landscape was, was really starting to get set. The scenery through Kosciuszko National Park is amazing. Even though it's bitumen, look, we're told the boys, you buy these products to actually tour. You're not just always smashing them off-road. So you do want to enjoy some of the sights and um, they're just pretty keen to just beat their product up and see, you know, and just laugh how it doesn't break. But, you know, I was actually enjoying the countryside. Check out those emus, boy. Yeah, the uh, local ARB at Kuma, they were saying that they've just had a massive plague of kangaroos. Their pool bar sales are up amazingly because there's just so much roadkill. New South Wales parks do an epic job in maintaining some of those campgrounds. You know, I think the first one we pulled up for a photo shoot. Oh, it was amazing, the green grass, and you know, the boys are saying, yeah, you know, stuff this, let's just hang around here. <laughs> yeah, so we come up from Jindabyne through Threadbow, just arrived at Tom Groggan, the banks of the Murray River. And then the sail, we're going to head up towards a little lookout called Olsen's Lookout. Overlooks Mount Kosciuszko, Australia's highest mountain. And then duck down into Geohai Creek. There's some beautiful huts in there, nice camp spots. Yeah, and in here I talked to the ranger this week and um, he said there were still six vehicles stuck up in one of the steep tracks up there. Okay. From the rain a week ago, so that's how gnarly it gets once it gets wet around here. It's not making 10. Yeah. It's not making 10. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into it. Get into it. Cool. The fact that there's been fires just before the Easter holiday period has meant that it's been surprisingly quiet. It's, you know, it's really been special to do what everyone wants to do and that is go on the track all by themselves or follow, you know, find that beautiful campsite all by themselves. That was a pretty scenic little spot down at Tom McGrog in there looking at the, uh, at the river. Not one single other person down at that beautiful campground. 
the things we give up for R&D testing could be down there flicking it all over. We're out here testing. Yeah, testing. It's pretty keen to uh, actually do some testing though. This tarmac's getting a bit boring. Yeah, well, Rob's got us uh, pegged into going up Olsen's lookout soon, and that's dirt track all the way up there. Yep. See you up the top of the hill. Yeah. Sorry, car will make it, Dave. Yeah, it should be right, man. You just watch that little Tonka truck, all right? <laughs> Turned up to this lookout and just over basically the back of that mountain there is Mount Kosciuszko. Um, we're at about a thousand and fifty meters here, so pretty high to bring a zone, but um, didn't have any troubles coming up here. And as you can see in the background, a awesome lookout. We did have great plans of getting to camp early enough to uh, settle in and set up and get a nice fire going so we can cook up. But um, as usual, times got tight, so probably change plans shortly. We started seeing some fog around early on the first couple of days and I thought well if, let's get deep into a valley beside some of these beautiful mountain streams and the landscape just took care of the rest. So we're just in the right place at the right time. Heaps of wildlife, that was pretty special. For me anywhere where we go where there's freshwater picturesque creeks, you know being able to camp down as close as we can to, to any type of destination like that to me is just gold. There was an absolute peach right on the creek, you know in the trees. Yeah, I mean, it set the tone for the trip, really. Some off-grid camping, you know, getting the trailers to do exactly what they're designed to do. Massive day driving yesterday. Pretty big day today on the tarmac. This is a reward. A little campsite right next to the river. It's flowing pretty hard there. The boys got the lures out. It's pretty epic. I'm just setting this thing up. Like, this expedition series came straight out of the factory, so, um, you know, I didn't want so much of an outdoor kitchen because we've already got the kitchen built in here. This is my breakfast bar. If you know me, you know, what's important to me is coffee in the morning. <laughs> So we've got the coffee machine, got the milk in the fridge, we've got the induction cooked up, so we can do a bit of cooking. We've got the Weber in the uh, in the toolbox. Pretty well sorted out, really, nice and easy. Big battery, big inverter. Coffee in the morning, cooked up right now, get some more for dinner. Just sort of jumped out of bed and um, someone's noticed that one of my tyres is flat on the caravan. So uh, a little bit of a white knuckle morning, so um, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle to change it. Dave has a tendency to go a bit quick with really high tyre pressures in really rocky road. And I think we had, if we had a rock in the tyre, it would have been a couple of inches, just jammed in between tread blocks. I'm not sure whether that's uh, bad skill or bad luck, but... Bad skill. <laughs> that reckons bad skill. <laughs> pretty, pretty pointy little sharp rock, so straight through the center of the tire. It's left a pretty big hole, so it might be a couple of doubled up or even tripled up speedy plugs to try and get in there. And if it doesn't hold it, we're just gonna have to put the spare on. It all plugged at the moment, so we'll wait and see. I suppose this shows one of the reasons why you gotta drop your tire pressures, it's so important. I think we're running about 38, 40 in these. And yeah, I think if we were down to probably 25 in the van, it wouldn't have happened, so. Yeah, it is what it is. So yeah, today probably 25 in the van and 18 in the car. We'll see how we go. Oh, G High Hut Campground. It's definitely one to tick off. So uh, looks like we're pretty much in the high country now, and we got a little little creek adventure to get out of here. Dave, you're going to uh, avoid all the sharp rocks today, buddy. Yeah, I'll be keeping a real real sharp eye out on the road in front of me to make sure I miss those rocks. You just have to keep an eye on that tire for a bit. Just make sure it's holding air. You got pressure monitors on that, Dave? Nah, I've got a visual, it's looking good. So casual. It was gorgeous to get up in the morning. You guys were catching the, the sunrise, and then, yeah, we see, you know, a couple of hundred roos just jumping around. So, yeah, it was an amazing sight to see. I honestly couldn't have believed it. We came out onto this 
open grassy field with you know, probably literally a hundred kangaroos, heaps of emus everywhere, like a zoo really. Special little creek crossing here, boys. How are the vans going through the creek crossing? There's some decent boulders. I might have just run over one. How are you guys going? No problem here. It's pretty hard to see, but it's a nice firm bottom anyway. Yeah, I'm seeing your trailer work, Matt. It's, um, those airbags making pretty light work of it, especially the big long ATX arms. Yeah, it does it nice. Reckon, uh, reckon you're going to jump in, Nick? I'm sort of still waiting for that to happen, buddy. Yeah, it was a fair bit chillier than I expected this morning, I can tell you that. But yeah, no, before the trip's over, I reckon I'm going to take a morning dip. Yeah, okay. Well, I think that could have something to do with, you know, having a couple of Larrys and, uh, you know, being a bit excited, making calls like that. Oh, no, nah, mate, I'll uh, wait for Victorian waters and then I'll feel like I'm truly at home. Yeah, good. Probably going to be a little bit colder. Just pulled over in Tom Grogan campground, um, just on the side of the road, we're airing down because we're about to go across uh, the Murray, and that means we're officially in the Victorian high country. So, um, yeah, we'll get them down to about 25 just to help the traction on the soft stuff and a little bit of the slippery stuff, and um, yeah, we'll have a bite to eat and then head over. I could sense that the, the rest of the, the crew, the Queenslanders, didn't really understand how iconic that crossing is. So um, for us uh, Victorians, and I suppose some of the people in New South Wales, it's a very iconic crossing. It's, it's the only place that you can drive across the Mighty Murray. It's going to be pretty tight to get the trailers through on the other side. And then we've got a dog leg right hand turn to the Tom Grogan track. It's going to be pretty tight, so you will have to go past that, do your turn and gotcha. go through. So these trees are a bit of concern for the big van, so yeah. it's going to need a spotter. And in the middle of, of the river, you've, still got, you've actually got quite a big hole. People have tried to drive through the middle. So, um, but yeah, stay to the right. Use these boulders as a marker if you can. Obviously for the big van, it's gonna be a pain in the ass. Um, and then, yeah, just straight up the top. It's a pretty easy crossing, but a very iconic one. And look, the, the crossing is, it's, it's known to be a pretty easy crossing, unless you're doing it probably in November after the snow melts. Um, going the other way, if you're going Vic to New South Wales, towing, uh, it's a bit hairy, because there's sort of a, um, a dog leg right uh, off camber. That's how we came in. So we, the boys just dropped in. Alrighty boys, I'm almost home, just got to cross the Mighty Murray. It's the only place we can actually do it by car, so it's pretty special. I think the, the focus here is definitely to get that 18 footer down carefully, so even if we uh, just get them wet and then wait for Dave to get that trailer all the way in. Yeah mate, it sounds good, just so you can see, obviously you can see me going down, it's pretty steep there, so stay to your right. Copy, I'll just keep a bit more distance than we're used to here. The river's the easy bit, it's just the entry. The exit's easy, so once you get in, you'll be sweet. Cubby. Uh, I think the tree will be all right, Dave. It's pretty clear on the little expedition. Dave did an unreal job towing the 18 foot six through there, so he made it look real easy. Just straight away after crossing Tom Grogan, you can see the terrain changes, even the soil changes. It's just a totally different environment. Amazing how it changes from New South Wales, you know, across this little river, and then Victoria, the, the, the landscape's completely different. The way the forests are is completely different, and it was pretty much straight into some pretty steep climbs and some pretty dense forests. The scenery's amazing, Nick. Thanks for bringing us to your home, uh, home soil. Yeah, the old backyard's looking nice, green and lush. So I think they've had a bit of rain the last three weeks, so I'm um, loving it. Get the picture as to what must happen when a bushfire comes through here. Yeah, there's plenty of fuel, isn't there? How are you going in the Amrock there, mate, with the expedition series? Yeah, quietly impressed, to be honest. We'll see how the rest of the day pans out, but I think, uh, was anticipating a bit of a struggle, but it just seems to have so much power and grip, so. Yeah, loving it. It's got a warning light on the gearbox oil temperature. So, um, the manual makes a lot of sense and it's really easy to read, so. It's just in, like, in first the whole way up and just, it's just got hot, there's no airflow. This is where I told you the farm truck would just start purring like a kitten. 
He's about to run out of fuel, but he doesn't have hot gearbox oil, so at least when it's sitting on the side of the road, I have cool oil. <laughs> it's actually not in here at all. When you're coming in there, there's a lot of unknowns, you know, like it's the first time I've had that new car off-road. Um, it's the first time we've had a van that size and that sort of terrain with that Dave was towing, you know, so we didn't really know where the limit was. So, you know, we were going in there and we were very tentative and, you know, the first couple of climbs we were like, yeah, how good's this? You know, and they progressively got harder and harder throughout the trip and pretty quickly into some heavy climbing. Um, we'd been told that we shouldn't uh, take our big vans up to through the Mount Pinabar track. So we, we went the, uh, the Tom Groggan way and by no means was that easy either. Plenty of plenty of climbs and descents and um, loose rock. Certainly see why this is such a popular four wheel driving destination. You know, we haven't gone far and it's like spectacular. And it's a real tight turn here guys. Um, it's gonna be real tight for the farm truck. Should be right Dave, we're just gonna lead into it real wide. Let's go to show that you know, the different sort of market situation for these as opposed to the, Dave, the you know, the 18 foot that Dave's towing, <laughs> just probably a little bit big for these tracks. Yeah, that's why I think I've, I've always loved that sort of hybrid style that, that you've got in the Expedition Series, where it gives you the, the comfort and the security when you're uh, out bush, and, but then you can still get up these tracks and enjoy this sort of scenery, not just um, our back touring. I definitely haven't had any moments where I've thought, you know, that we're out of our depth. It's, uh, it's just a little bit of the narrow tree foliage is probably the only concern, but I'd have, happily have the family sitting in the car all, to, all the way to where we are now. It's kind of amazing when you think about the weight difference that that dual axle 18 foot with, you know, three bunks and all a bit full on sweet kitchen, it's a ton heavier than the Expedition, so it's not a massive amount really when you've got all that extra gear and thighs. Uh, definitely not, it's the... Uh, and wheels definitely make it a pretty comfortable thing to tow. Well, I suppose weight per wheel, you've got less kilos per wheel in that thing than you do in the 18 foot six than you do in the um, Expedition series, isn't it? Let's talk about weight to horsepower. I'm probably still winning. I think you're winning the weight to noise ratio. Yeah, same, same. So, um, three o'clock in the hour, we were due to head back and head up the mountains this afternoon. Um, so we need to be deciding now whether we, we're gonna stay here, make camp for the night. If we um, not on so keen on staying here, push on for another couple of hours and find another campsite further on. There's just no water in here, so just, we're sort of early in the day and a bit locked out on going up the hill, so yeah, we've so got another reckon. recommendation of potentially moving up the road. So we could push through another couple of hours uh, up to Wheeler's Hut. Make you can't bend in it. Wheeler's Hut, yeah. And then we can come up the back of Mount Pinabar tomorrow. Where we headed, eh? Yeah. A little break and then Wheeler's Creek Hut. Wheeler out of here. across to Wheeler Creek Hut, pretty popular hunter's cabin. They usually get, get in there pretty early and, and base camp there, which we found a sort of stack of beagles, poor beagles chained together. Uh, that kept us up the start of the night, but um, it, was a, it was a gorgeous spot, it was nice green. It was by a creek. Just pulled into a bit of a campsite for the night. Again, it's down right next to the river. That's the prerequisite from here on out. We're doing the river tour of Victoria. You know, there's no one around. There's a few dogs barking in the background because I think it's deer hunting season. Right down by the river, Matty bringing out the guitar. He's brought the beer along. It's perfect, really. It's a great setup. And uh, you know, another early start tomorrow for some more wheeling. Get a little bit higher. Maybe leaving the trailers, maybe taking them, not sure, but you know, well and truly in the high country and loving it. Roll out of here soon. We're going up. Yeah. We're going to climb some mountains today. Sounds like you're up over 1500 meters. Very, it's pretty tight, so leave the big one here. Yeah, definitely leave the big one here. Yeah. 
bit of tree cover and yeah, lots of steep climbs. So. Yep, and we'll just see how the Tonka truck goes <coughs> pulling the uh, expedition up. <laughs> we'll, yeah. We might have to swap it over, eh? Yeah, this will be the toughest day yet, I reckon. Mm. Oh, I'm looking forward to it, eh? A bit of a challenge. We obviously left the, the big van at camp for the day and, and headed up for Pinna Bar. Probably need to say from the outset that, you know, it's not really a towing track. Um, we certainly don't advise people to follow our footsteps in that. I mean, we are here product testing and, you know, we're pushing the limits, but, you know, we've got a good safety net with the crew and the team around us. So, I guess the, uh, the downline of Pinnabar is it's not really suitable for trailers, so obviously we don't want to uh, do anything to A, damage the track, B, annoys everybody and C, is reckless, so we obviously have to take it pretty carefully. Nick, have you had some experience with a Pinnabar? Yeah, mate, been there a few times. They generally rate it as a, a difficult track. Um, again, really around here in the high country comes, comes down to what the weather's been like for the last few weeks. When we talk about difficulties, would it, what, how would it compare to like that initial hill climb on the Tom Grogan track? Yeah, we were talking about that climb yesterday that we did where the, uh, where the Amarok got hot um, and this climb today is steeper, looser rock and uh, about 10 times longer. I think it's smart getting the, um, the hard climb out of the way early. The light's going to be good. Uh, then if something goes wrong, we've got all day to get back down the mountain. Actually, we were just talking about how easy this road in here was, and uh, <laughs> now Nick's sort of chuckling at me because it's a bit of a challenge. Craig looks all right, it's a bit of a bumpy one in the middle, but then it's it's really off camber and a bit weird up around the top there. So, yeah, certainly uh, wouldn't have been good for the big van, so it could be a first indication of a good choice to leave it behind, but I reckon it was. We'll give her an nudge and see how we go. Yeah, the gnarly stuff's hit and we're going to have to drop some tyre pressures a bit more. Uh, Maddie was running 20, which is pretty high for the high country. And uh, now we're dropping him down to 15. You know, it's probably two, two tonne on the back of the car. And physics says you just need a whole lot more traction, you need bigger rubber. Yeah, it's pretty gnarly. Um, you can see why most people don't tra tow trailers up here. But that's what we're here for, test the gear, test the cars. And um, I'm sure we'll get up one way or another. Yep, coming through! Only car towing today, and it's um, you know the only car without low range as well. So <laughs> she's been interesting. It's pretty low traction stuff. I mean, it's pretty steep gradient, and the Amarok's definitely you know at the end of its um, capabilities at times. So you know, luckily enough, we got good gear, and that's sort of why we, we were able to take it on. You know, we're not being reckless, and obviously, if we start doing any damage to the track that they were not happy with, then we'll stop um, towing with the Amarok as well, and maybe put it behind the farm truck. But until then, uh, we'll give the little German girl another go and keep pushing on. Come close to the summit. This is uh, absolutely what we came here for. Rob promised us some uh, open ridge line and some beautiful views. Definitely got that. Yeah, this is definitely that open ridge line I was looking for. Yeah, it's pretty iconic, isn't it? This, when you think of the Victorian high country, you just think of these sorts of just open views, which mountain after mountain. It's the best spot in the high country I've ever been. It's way better than the Blue Rag. The Blue Rag's awesome, but this is just vistas and every direction. Was it? Pretty easy going there for you, Matty. 
Yeah, 90% of the time there's a couple of little moments so it's just, uh, you know, getting used to things and struggling for traction a little bit, but, you know, it's all in all a bit of a challenge to get up here. It feels like a reward to be on the top, and I think it was definitely the right move to leave the 18 behind, eh, Dave? Yeah, I think so, mate. There's, you know, no real, no real gain by getting it up here apart from testing knowledge for us, but, um, you know, I think we've learned a few things by bringing the expedition up here. Yeah, I think we learn again that uh, quite often the uh, the harder road is the one that gives you the better result as far as uh, location goes, and that's what we got right now. Oh, boys, I can see the finish line. Giddy up, Mount Pinabar. How epic is this? Oh, man, I'm pumped. Oh, yeah, awesome. Just park up to the right of me, John, so right next to the spire, claim the mountain. Have a glass of wine with these people. Epic, boys, well done. absolutely yeah, epic. Really rare too, I think I've, I've been there you know, a handful of times and I'd say just about every time it's just covered in fog. So we're on the eastern face of Pinabar here and one of those tops there is, is the Olsen's Lookout where we, where we kicked off yesterday morning. Um, and, and when we were there we were sort of panning back towards Kosciuszko but we couldn't quite see it. So now that we're up on Pinabar which is about 1700 metres we've got a perfect view of Kosciuszko. Yesterday we, we went down through that big valley down through there on the other side of where, where Gibbo is and around the back into our camp, so over there in the west. And basically we've climbed up this Pinabar ridge to where we are now and just to confuse things a bit more, we're gonna go down, climb that next range in front of us over onto Gibbo, which is more or less a pretty similar height to where we are here at Pinabar. Team. This one is a little bit hairy. Make sure the projectiles in the car are locked away. It's uh, pretty hairy, pretty steep. Nothing steeper than what we've done before, but it's a lot of loose rocks and little uh, step ups. So with those step ups and you towing, nature of the car, as you know, is just going to just come nose in the air. Uh, all that horsepower you got in that V6, uh, just be concerned with breaking a, a CV in the front. Roger that. Sounds like I gotta go fast, but leave the wheels on the ground. Yeah, <laughs> defy physics, mate. Okay, well, I'm coming. Again, if you sort of zigzag up the track, there's the left hand potholes, and you sort of go you point left and then go right, you'll see. That's it. Holy crap. Woo! Oh my god. Just now it starts to get soft just after the first wash away, mate. Just give it a bit of a bit of curry. We're coming up. Second, I'm just gonna roll back down to that little bumpy bit. No worries, mate. Just doesn't turn, Rob, it drags straight, look. Yeah, you got a hard right hand down. Good. All right, level's out here a bit. Not liking the chance here, we're just gonna have another crack at trying to get it moving. Otherwise, it's gonna have to be a tow. Just go bananas left and right in that steering wheel, mate. Gonna find traction somewhere. Yeah, get into it there, mate. Get into it. Yeah, get into it. Keep 
Yeah, that's where we're going. Riding that rich and good up the left. Oh, oh, yeah, nice. Well done. Well, oh, thanks, man. <laughs> Shit. It was an awesome day. We didn't get in anyone's way. The boys learnt a lot about single axle versus dual axle. They started really seeing that single axle sway left to right. It was a great trip. I think it really does come down to the gear and it highlights the need to have your truck set up well, um, you know, by professionals and, and make sure that, you know, it's all working properly in service. And if you are game to take a trailer, same thing, you know, it has to be a good trailer. You have to know your weights, you have to know, you know, what you can do and, and the, the gear's going to stay together. Another Arvo, another mountain, guys. How do you feel, Mount Gibbo almost conquered? Oh, I'm going to call that one once we're up here. Oh, it's still pretty slippery. Yeah, almost, mate. There's a bit of a rock ledge at the moment. It's uh, a bit bumpy, but there's a fair bit of traction there. That should be too much of an issue for you, Johnsy. Yep, she loves it. I mean, Gibbo is a relatively cruisy drive until that last bit. You know, it's probably a last 800 metres. It's pretty extreme. It's loose rock. Uh, it looked like it had been chopped up a bit. It's probably worse than I remember it. All right, guys, a few little rock steps up here. Oh, send it, Johnsy. <laughs> Launching wheels everywhere. Go, son, go. I reckon you got a fair bit of traction there, but I'll tell you, your back left trailer tie is about to drop off a little one foot ledge, so you'd be much better if you don't go back. Okay, hold still. Man, I think we need to give you some help from there. Ah, uh, yeah, she's pretty, <laughs> she's pretty wedged. Tricky's coming in with the goods, mate. Pull you out of there. Yeah, I've got an engine box overheat scenario going on. What we've done, we put a bridle together. It basically distributes all the load across the front of the car. We're going to get a snatch strap, we've got the Ranger up the front. Um, yeah, really, look, massive rock ledges, it's just physics. A lot of weight, um, some small tyres, and we're trying to get up a hill, so. Are you going to snatch here, Nick, or just like take the toe? Okay, well, I'm just gonna basically go as soon as the snatch is about to take up. I've got revs on now, mate. Yep, I am rolling now. Go, go. All right, brother, we'll probably be good to come off here. No worries, mate, stop me. Legend, mate, thank you. Uh, we both reckon he had it. If he had another crack at it, he would have made it up there, but yeah, it had to give him a bit of a tug. We're here. That's it. We're here, boys. It's just there. Gibbo. Yeah, for me, Gibbo. Yeah, that's one you just have to go there. Yeah, well, Pinabo was a nice climb. Gibbo was a real challenge, you know, getting right at the top of that thing. I think that was uh, that was a bit of a crowning moment for me and, and the little Amarok towing the expedition series. Today has been, I have to say, the best four-wheel driving I've ever done. Not to say that I'm really uh, that experienced or good at four-wheel driving, but it has been an epic battle with the elements. I've had a bit of a struggle with the trailer behind me. The extra weight's really made it difficult, but we've conquered them all, you know. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a team effort to get here, that's for sure. It's absolutely spectacular. Boys are having a look at Kosciuszko. Apparently it's been around all day, but it's just been fantastic. What a day. So we're heading back to camp. The look, the weather's starting to roll and it's really turning from the blue skies we've had all day. Um, so, yeah, we're going to try and get down there before dark um, and then, you know, make a, make, make a decision on where we're going to camp for the night. But, uh, yeah, we've still got a bit of work to do to get off the hill. Another awesome spot and awesome sunset as well up there and made our way home in the dark. Like all of the... the the routes we took through here, they all they all took every estimated hour and nothing shorter, but we we made it back to camp pretty late that night. Yeah, we didn't want to stay in the same campsite as we had the night before, and there were cars in there, so they made it a bit difficult, but Rob managed to find one just up the road, so it was a relocate in the dark. Um, you know, get in there, set up, fire, dinner, bed. It's a beautiful area, not much relaxing on our behalf. <laughs> She's been pretty go, go, go. Stay tuned for part two, where we take on some of the most iconic tracks in the Victorian high country with a full-size 18-foot-six off-road. Try and complete Matt's childhood dream of making it to Craig's hut.